Hello everyone and welcome back. On this video, we're going to talk about a subject that can make or break your mix. It can make your master sound louder or quieter. It can make your final results sound more professional. And that's gain staging. Such an important thing and something that many people neglect and many people don't take care of. In my opinion, Cubase is the king of gain staging when it comes to DAWs and on this video I'm not only going to show you why but I'm going to show you all the ways that you can gain stage inside Cubase because you might just have missed some of them. If there is one DW that makes gain staging a breeze and a pleasure, that's Cubase. And I'm going to show you why today on this video. So gain staging, what is gain staging basically? Gain staging is one of these things that you need to get right from the very beginning when you start producing a track or recording a track, and especially when you're mixing a track, so that you can get to the next stage when it comes to mixing, when it comes to mastering. Uh, if you gain stage right at the very beginning, then you're going to mix better, you're going to master better, everything is going to sound cleaner. So when I'm talking about gain staging, it's all about making sure that you have enough headroom on your master bus, that you have enough headroom for your plugins, you have enough headroom for your processing. Let's say I have these drums, okay? And let's uh, duplicate them a few times, like this. That's fine, that's enough for me. But let's play them and let's see what happens. Let's go to our meter here that I always want to keep open and let's see how it looks. Check what happens here, right? I just dropped this loop from Media Bay. It's, it's almost peaking at zero, right? Now, this... On its own, it's not a problem, but in the context of a mix, this will break your mix in the end. Right now, if I start producing a track, and many people start like that, they just drop a loop and they start adding things on top of it. If I start working like this, let's say I want to add a sub bass or something like this, already I'm going to clip my master bus, right? I'm going to go over zero. Even if I add this vocal, you will see that I'm going to clip. Let's 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 play it just for the fun of it. Let go while you have let go. Okay, we clipped with just one vocal, not even a sub. A sub would have so much more energy, okay? So, I mean, uh, we know that for digital audio, we shouldn't go over zero. So, what you would normally do, you know, what most people do, and I see many people doing this uh, in other DAWs as well, what they do, the, the instinct is to go to your mixer, okay, here, and basically they drop the their faders, like this, they just lower the faders. Oh, By the way, I've said this many times, I always like to keep a headroom of minus 12 on my master bus while I'm still producing and mixing. And this will give you great results when you're mastering later on, okay? Most of the times this works. Don't take it as a rule or anything, but for me, it works like 99% of the time. It looks like we solved the problem. Now, this is all good, and if you have nothing else to work with, that might be your only solution. This is not really a solution, and I'm going to tell you why. Basically, when you produce and you're working with loops, you're working with uh, virtual instruments, you know, most of the times, all these loops, all those virtual instruments are going to be very close to zero. They're going to be very loud. Why? Because, guess why? Like music, if you're a sound designer, okay, I've done quite a bit of sound design work, and I know that I cannot afford my sounds to be quiet, okay? If I make a loop sample pack, and my loops are quiet, and they're already gain staged, nobody's going to like them, because immediately they think, it's quiet, it's not good. It's just like music, okay? That's why we had the loudness wars. That's why people still want loud mixes. The same goes with presets on software synthesizers. If you get something like Omnisphere, for example, and you just load a preset, 
it sounds incredible, but it sounds loud. It sometimes it clips the stereo bus straight away, straight away. So, I mean, if you're working with the instruments, you can turn down the output of the instrument. That's the best way to do it. But what happens with loops? What happens with, you know, instruments that you have no control over an output? It's just audio. This might solve the problem, like we said, but not really. Why? Because when you've done this, immediately you've sacrificed a lot of flexibility when it comes to digital mixing. Let me explain. Check out the faders here, right? And see what happens. See here we have zero. This is unity gain for this fader. Now check how much space I have to move between zero and let's say minus five, okay? There's a lot of room. And actually I can use my fader to show you, see? A lot of room. Now, if you pull down your fader like this, so from here to here, it's 5 dBs, but from here to here, it's 10 dBs, and from here to here, it's 10 dBs. You see where I'm going? The resolution decreases the more you lower the fader. So what does that mean in uh, practical terms? Let's say you want to automate this vocal later on. First of all, when you lower the fader, you've already lost this thing. Now you need to automate the fader, it's still here, you have less control, right? It's much better if you automate the fader starting from here and move like that, rather than starting from here and go like, okay, now that's 10 dBs, it's too much, too much, too much, you know? You lose resolution here for most digital mixers. The next thing that people do when they work in a DW is they grab their events, you know, their audio event, and they use clip gain, okay? In Cubase, you can, of course, do this, you can cut and, and do it again, and so on and so forth. This is a better solution, if you ask me. The problem with this solution is that when you do this, you're altering the audio, okay? You're actually, even if it's not destructive, you're changing this. First of all, I don't like doing this because then what happens is, you know, sometimes you have to go like this and then you can't see the waveforms anymore and you have to zoom in and then some other waveforms are huge and these are really small. You know what I'm talking about. And while I was working in studios, I had to work with DAWs where I had to do this. This was the main practice, right? I wasn't very happy. Right, so what's the best way? You know, what, what if it's not that and if it's not anything else, then what's the best way? Let me show you how you can gain stage in Cubase and you will be so much happier if you know all these different gain stages in Cubase. The first gain stage option is on your mixer. You know, you can use it here on the pre section or on your channel settings. And look what happens. I just leave my fader at Unity Gain. I leave my waveform alone. Another reason why I want to leave my waveform alone because my client might say, you know what? I'm going to send you a replacement vocal. Now I have to figure out what gain staging I had there and change it, you know? Or, you know, they say, I'm going to send you a different version of this Rhodes part. And then I have to redo everything clip by clip, you know, event by event. Not fun, not fun. Instead, if you work like this and you open your mixer and you go to your pre-gain or here, pre-gain, check what happens to this drum loop, okay? Minus 12. I hit minus 12. Is my fader intact? Check. Is my waveform intact? Check. No problem. That's the first gain staging stage, right? Our pre-gain. Like in real consoles, they knew what they were doing. The DAW should be able to do this for you. What's the next gain stage? The next gain stage is very interesting and I think that many people forget it exists. And this is a lifesaver when it comes to vocals. And I'm going to explain. The next gain stage is dynamic. We can actually morph it with the waveform and it will follow the waveform. Let me explain. This is actually one of the things that I always do in Cubase. This is one of my tricks when I want to get really nice vocals that sit right in the mix without over compressing them and without 
you know, adding so much compression that it's unnatural and I start to get artifacts. Maybe I'm gonna do a more detailed video about this. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that. But in a nutshell, you just grab your pencil tool, okay? And let's see, see, now we know that this part of the vocal is loud, okay? Most people in, you know, if you're using an DW, you already have to automate. I'm not even close to automating yet. Automation is for making your mix dynamic, fixing problems, all these things, but it's the very, very last stage after your plugins, after everything else. We need to fix issues or tame vocals before we even get to this stage, right? If I leave this like it is right now, it's going to drive into my compressor, into my EQ, and this bump here is going to make my compressor work harder. Why? You don't want that, right? So, here's what you do. You just grab your pencil tool and check how easily and how naturally you can make this vocal a little bit more smooth. Check it out. Check it out. See that? Did you know about this? Let me know in the comments down below. This is the secret trick for vocals, right? Don't overdo it, but trust me, this will sound way more natural than any compression, okay? And we, it's, we want compression, we want to use compression because they, it can give us a character, but don't use a compressor to fix problems that you can do like this. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit, just, just, just make, tame it a little bit. Let go, are you? Okay, and then you can actually, I overdid it here, but you can actually do it exactly like you want to. Let go, are you See how this sounds now? It doesn't peak so much. Check Let it out. Let go, are you Okay, let's undo everything. Let go. See, it reaches almost minus 10. Let go, are you And then, with all the editing. Let go, are you But it doesn't sound compressed. It doesn't sound muffled. It doesn't sound like it cannot breathe. And I'm doing it very quickly now, but I would actually spend some time doing this. And see, this remains here, it's clip-based. It's clip-based, which means that if I move this, it will stay there. If I cut, it will stay here, see? It doesn't change. And this, you can do this very easily using the pencil tool. Now, after this comes the event volume handle, see, like this. This is, most DWs have this, right? You can do this, but that's on top of this, see? It takes into account what you did here. It doesn't destroy what you did here. So that means that if you do all this detailed work on a vocal, especially for vocals, this is really, really important because you want to make them sit very well in your mix. And, you know, slapping a compressor only, it can get you there, but this will give you a much better result any day. I'm telling you, I can guarantee that. Now, if you say, okay, actually, I want this to be quieter in general, I can just do this, okay, or louder in general, okay, but this is still retained. This is a clip-based automation, you might say it, you might call it. It's not exactly automation, but you draw your volume, basically. And then we have the fader, and here we go. Here is our fader, okay? So now, after we've passed through all this, we go through our inserts, we go through our channel strip, everything is nice and even, it's smoothened out, and now we can actually go to our fader. And then, of course, if we want to automate our fader, it's simple, I just go like this, right automation, Let go, are you and maybe then. So now I recorded the automation, and as you can see, everything comes together so nicely. And of course, I can edit those, but I'm helping every step of the way. I'm adding the pre-gain, I'm adding the volume curves, I'm adding the vent volume, you know? Now, if I want to keep this automation, but I want to make this louder or quieter, I can do this, you know? And it will update. And if I want, of course, I can just go and use 
these great functions that we have when it comes to automation, you can also, you know, kind of compress the automation, you can expand it, you can tilt it, all these beautiful things. And to be honest with you, it's very, very cool the way that you can do all these things. You know, if you wanted to do this and you wanted to make sure that this thing doesn't have this big bump, then you would have to cut here and do this and then do that, but it's not so natural. Here I can create curves. This is, I think, the biggest secret, you know, because I've seen many people, they want to do something like this and what they end up doing, it's really sad. You know, when I see it, I'm like, Mm, you know, they do this. But that's the final output of the channel. It's not the same. It's really not the same. By the time you add plugins and compressors and all these things, and sometimes you might be in post fader, this thing will completely ruin your balance. You know, it won't be the same. Where here, you take care of everything before it hits your plugins. And speaking about plugins, gain staging is really important with plugins. Some plugins can handle hot levels. Some other ones cannot handle hot levels. Some plugins are emulating analog carter parts, which means that if you drive them hard, they will saturate, you know, and you might not want that. For example, I did a video about the black box uh, hardware versus the plugin. The plugin does exactly the same thing like the hardware. If you drive it hard and you're peaking at like, I don't know, uh, minus three, then it will immediately start to add harmonic saturate. If you want to add a little bit of subtle saturation, then you need to drive the plugin a little bit softer. You shouldn't overload it or go very hot on it. So use these things right, use these gain stages right, and I can guarantee you, your mixes are going to be better. You're going to be able to make your track sound louder if you do all the gain staging correctly for all your tracks. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below, did you know about all these pre-gain stages? I'd really like to know how many of you knew about all this. And uh, I hope you make good use of it. If you learned something today and you enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up button, it really helps me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share it with any Cubase user that might not know this. And if you have a friend that uses another DAW, maybe they want to start mixing in Cubase, you know? each to their own, but for mixing, this is really awesome. So, take care guys, I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.